to my channel. I'm Hannah and I'm gonna be doing a book haul today. <laughs> I got a lot of books. As you can see, I can almost not lift them up. They're way too heavy. Let me put them down. Yeah. No, they're falling. They're falling. Okay, it's alright. It's fine. It's fine. I think. Yeah, it's fine. It has been my birthday uh, this April and I kind of want to do a uh, April birthday March book haul like all the books I got in March plus my birthday as my birthday is literally at the start of April so I thought why not show you all the books that I got as gifts and uh, ones that I bought you know all the books that I bought were thrift store books this month so I will be doing a birthday and a, a thrift store haul book haul thingy I'm gonna be doing it in two parts part one will be my birthday books and part two will be my thrift store books. So let's get on to part one. The first book I got from the thrift store was The Kite Runner. The sun is in here. You can see it when I put it in there. Okay. The Kite Runner. Um, I've already read this book, but I never had uh, an English copy. I read it in Dutch uh, like years, 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 years ago. Um, the back, it's not on the back, it's in the front. It's right here. Um, Taking us from Afghanistan in the final days of the monarchy through the horrific invasion of the Taliban, the Kite Runner is the heartbreaking story of the unlikely and inseparable friendship between a wealthy boy and the son of his father's servant, both of whom are caught in tragic sweep of history. It is also about the power of reading, the price of betrayal, the possibility of redemption, and the influence of fathers over sons, of a country over men, and the sacrifices, loyalty, and lies that bind them. So that's the Kite Runner. Um, as I said before, I've already read this book, but I really wanted to read it again, and um, I didn't want to read it again in Dutch. I really wanted an English copy, and then I found this at the thrift store, and I was happy. I also found another book of his in a thrift store, so it uh, makes my collection complete, I guess. The next book I found in my near thrift store is uh, Omerus. Omerus is written by Derek Walcott. Um, he is the winner of the Nobel Prize of Literature. It literally says so on the front. So that's not really knowledge that I uh, obtained in any strange way. It's a poetic kind of story. It's more of an epic poem than uh, short poems that he wrote. As you can see, like it has the story is written in poetry and i've always wanted to give poetry a shot as i've never really done that yet like i also want to read i've got it right here dante's inferno um which is also like a, a story written in poems so who knows maybe i'll like it i hope so and then i found the food of love um as you can guess it's a romance <laughs> Maybe because of the title, it's kind of clear, but it's a romance. Laughter, romance, seduction. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Laura Patterson, a 24-year-old student, is spending a year studying art history in Rome. She decided that from now on, she only go out with a man who can cook. Tomato Messi, handsome and silver tongue, tells Laura that he's a chef at one of Italy's best restaurants. In reality, he's just a humble waiter. His best friend Bruno, his who really is a chef, a brilliant one, is called upon to help. But when he also falls for Laura, sparks begin to fly. Normally I'm not into um, love triangles. I actually kind of hate them. <laughs> like, it's so... If you... Um, like, in a love triangle, triangle, you're supposed to root for one person, like, one of the love interests. And when they're not going to be the one who's, who ends up with the person, it's going to be all disappointment. Um, so I don't know if I'll love it, but I also kind of wanted to give a shot because it sounds really interesting. Like this thing with the um, secret that he's not a chef, but he's like trying, like, but he's trying to come off as one. And also that his friend who really is a chef has to help, but then that chef is kind of more her type than the one that lies to her. Cause Let's get that clear. The, the the first thing we know is that the guy will lie to the love, the main love interest, right? I don't think I'll ship him with the character, but who knows? Who knows? We'll see. That's uh, the love of food. Of no, 
uh, the other way around, the food of love. The next thing I found in the thrift store was Stoner by John Williams. At the moment, this book is like really popular and I'm reading his other book, Watch Your Crossing, at the moment. Yeah, I'm really liking his other book and I saw this one uh, for cheaper and I thought, let's grab it. William Stoner enters the University of Missouri at 19 to study agriculture. Later, he becomes a teacher. He marries the wrong woman. His life is quiet and after his death, his colleagues remember him rarely. Yet, with truthfulness, compassion and intense power, this novel uncovers the story of his universal value. Stoner tells of the conflict, defeat and victories of the human race that pass unrecorded by history and reclaims the significance of individual life. A reading experience like no other, itself a paean to the power of literature, it's a novel to be savored. Um, I really want to know what the hype is about with this book. Um, it's like, it doesn't sound like that much of an intriguing plot, like my dude studies to be to be a farmer basically something with agriculture so i don't know what um and then he regrets it chooses something else and that's it <laughs> so I'm, I'm really wondering what the plot is going to be about in this book i'm also loving his other book that i'm reading right now so i am kind of hopeful for this book so who knows that was stoner and then I found The Lord of the Flies. Uh, this is a book I just really wanted to read because I've never read it before. The story really sounded interesting to me and I've never read it. So uh, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, you're coming home with me. A plane crashes on a desert island and the only survivors, a group of schoolboys, assemble on the beach and wait to be rescued. By day, they inhabit the land of the bright, fantastic birds and dark blue seas. But at night, their dreams are haunted by the image of a terrifying beast. As the boy's delicate sense of order fades, so their childish dreams are transformed into something more primitive, and their behavior starts to make, starts to take on a murderous, savage significance. Just young boys trying to be in some sort of society that they make up, but they're boys, so it's not gonna go great. Because like children, you know, you can you can ask children to like form a group and get a leader without them messing it up. I don't think it's even, I don't think it's possible. Like even with adults, it won't be possible. So with young boys, this is going to shit. And I'm really interested in that. So that's the Lord of the Flies. The second to last book I found is Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. This book I've already seen in the same thrift store uh, once before and I didn't pick it up back then. Because I thought like, okay, it's a true store and the book was kind of still expensive. So I was like, okay, maybe I could just wait for another copy to be in a true store. Next time I came around, they had this copy and was less expensive. Maybe it was more beaten down because like in this true store, if it's more beaten down, it's less expensive. Like if it's more beaten down, it's less expensive. And if it's no more new looking, it's more expensive in this true store. So, so that's... It's kind of fair. <laughs> it is fair. It is the day of death and a fiesta is in full swing in the shadow of Popacapel. It is the day of death and a fiesta is in full swing. In the shadow of Popacapel, great children beg for coins and buy skulls made of chocolate and the ugly prairie dogs roam the streets. Geoffrey Fern H. H. M. ex consul is drowning himself in liquor and mescal, while his ex-wife and half-brother look on him, powerless to help him. As the day wears on, it becomes apparent that Joffrey must die. It is his only escape from a world he cannot understand. I don't know which country this is, from, this is in. If I like look at the people who advertise this book on the back, it also says something about Mexico City, like somebody is from there. So maybe it is from Mexico, and that's why they reviewed this book. I don't know if the uh, author is uh, from there, or is uh, writing about his experiences there, or is writing about a story he um, from inspiration from there. I don't know yet, um, but it sounds interesting. The last book I bought at the thrift store is um, the third book of the 
Game of Thrones series. I also bought the two other Game of Thrones books that I have in this store. So I was back there and I was like, okay, I can just pick up another one of the Game of Thrones books. And why not? Um, you also never really see Game of Thrones in any thrift stores here, except that one. So I was like, okay, if I want it, if I want it in a thrifted version, I have to do it here, and I am at the store right now. So why not just buy it? I, I'm here anyway. I've also seen that it's really hard to get this um, volume of the Game of Thrones, like third book. I always see one and two and four, never three. I don't know what that is, but you always see one, two, four in the stores and never this one. I also only have one copy of this one and like four of the Game of Thrones books and four of Clash of Kings and four of the Feast of Crows and even a couple more of the fifth book. But this one, they only have one. <laughs> so I don't know. Why don't people have this book? <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I don't know if you haven't seen the show yet, so I won't give spoilers. Um, it's just the third book of the series, so it just goes on with the story of Game of Thrones. Um, so that was the last book of the Thrifted Guide. So let's go on to the birthday books. The first book I got it was from my mother. Uh, she gave me the Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. I hope I say his name correctly. Probably not again. This book is the winner of the Booker Prize in 2022. Then it has to be good, I think. At least I hope. At least I hope they don't lie to me that it's good, because then we're gonna have a problem. My mom and I were together in the bookstore, and I was allowed to choose any book I wanted, um, with of course, uh, like not too crazy on the price, but um, still, <laughs> I could choose any book I wanted, which took a while. We <laughs> had like too many choices, but um, I, I just I chose this one. I had a really fun uh, synopsis. Colombo, nineteen ninety. Mali Almeida, war photographer, gambler and closet gay, has woken up in what seems like a celestial visa office. His dismembered body is sinking in the Bira Lake and, has no, and he has no idea who killed him. At the time when scores are settled by death squads, suicide bombers and hired goons, the list of suspects is depressingly long, as the ghouls and ghosts who cluster around him can attest. But even in, his, even in the afterlife, time is running out of, for Mali. He has seven moons to try to contact the man and woman he loves most and lead them to the hidden cache of photos that will rock Sri Lanka. I'm getting murder mystery, I'm getting loved ones, I'm getting grief, I'm getting I wish I could have stayed longer, I, I wish I could be alive to be with you. I think this book has it all and that's why I chose this book. <laughs> so thank you mom for this book. The next book I got for my birthday is Boy Parts. Um, this is a book I have seen a lot online. It seemed more like a gruesome book and uh, more of a horror type book. Arena obsessively takes explicit photographs of average looking men she persuades to model for her, scouted from the streets of Newcastle. Placed on sabbatical from her dead end bar job, she is offered an exhibition at a, fashion, at a fashionable London gallery, promising to re revive her career in the art world and offering an escape from her red of drugs, alcohol, and extreme cinema. The news triggers her self-destructive tailpin centered around Arena's relationship with her obses obsessive best friend and a shy young man from a local supermarket who has attracted her attention. The third book I got for my birthday is The Man with the Compound Eyes from Wu Min Ying. Um, did I ask this book only for the cover? Yes, <laughs> look at how stunning this cover is. It's absolutely gorgeous. On the island of Vayu Vayu, every second son must leave on the day he turns 15 as a sacrifice to the sea god. Atali Yi is one of the boys determined to become the first to survive. Across the sea, Alice's life is disturbed when a huge trash vortex comes crashing onto the shore of Taiwan, bringing Atali with it. Atali and Alice form an unlikely friendship. She is a woman filled with grief, he is an outcast from a mystical land. Together they venture into the mountains and attempt to uncover its secret. Together they come to understand the world they have lost. I mean, I'm getting found family. I'm getting magic. I'm getting nature from this book. So did I get it for the cover? Yes. Did I stay for the plot? 
I did. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> the second to last book I got for my birthday is The Go Between from L.P. Hartley. This is a book that um, in my lectures from college, uh, this book came forward as uh, a book that uh, talks a lot about cultural heritage. And at the moment I do study uh, cultural heritage. And this book came forward as a great example um, with like little passages about cultural heritage and about the importance of cultural heritage. I immediately thought, now I got to read that book as I well, it's my study. <laughs> it's, what I, it's what I do on a daily basis. When one long hot summer, young Leo is staying with his school friend at Brandham Hall, he begins to act as a messenger between Ted, the farmer, and Marion, the beautiful young woman at, up at the hall. He becomes drawn deeper and deeper into their dangerous game of deceit, desire, until his role begins him to a shocking premature revelation. The hunting story of a young boy awakening into the secrets of an adult world. The go-between is also an unforgettable ovation of the boundaries of Edwardian society. So yeah, that sounds very intriguing to me. And also, I also stayed for the cover. I'm, I'm a cover judging girl. Look at it. It's beautiful. It has swans. It has cute swans. It's, it's so pretty. <laughs> this is a fancy book. Like, it, the cover is just so fancy. And I love it. And I want to be the girl that everybody's like, oh, she's got to be so smart. And maybe I am. But like, this shows it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Humble, I know. And the last book I got is A Huge Boy. It's A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Salmon. And it's huge. <laughs> it's, abs it's like bigger than my face. And probably thicker than my face, almost. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely gigantic. Absolutely gigantic. Okay, um, it is the sequel of... I also have it here, I think. Yeah. Or not. I do. Mm. The Pride of the Orange Tree. Um, but I gotta be honest. Like, I hate it. Like, this This sucks, though. This absolutely sucks. Who thought of this? Okay, I, I do know there's also a big version of this one. But I couldn't get uh, any... I couldn't find the smaller version of this one. I don't know if it's out yet, even. As, like, the paperbacks come later than the hardbacks, but this is not even a hardback, this is just the big paperback. But okay, it sucks that they're not the same size, but I'm I'm gonna live with it, as it's still pretty. Um, as again, cover judging girl. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even love The Party of the Orange Tree. However, I wanna give it a second chance. I wanna give it a reread before I go read the prequel. This is the prequel of this book. This one doesn't have much uh, spoilers, so... Tanufa Melim is his sister of the Pride. For 50 years she has trained the slave worms, but none have appeared since the nameless one. The younger generation is starting to question the Pride's purpose. To the north, in the Queendom of Innes, Sebran the Ambitions has married the new king of Hoth. Hoth? Hoth? Fantasy names, you know. Always, always a struggle. Nearly saving both realms from ruin, their daughter, Glorian, dwells in their shadow exactly where she wants to be. The dragons of the east have slept for centuries. Dumai has spent her life in the Seiki, Seiki mountain temple, trying to wake the gods from their long slumber. Now someone from her mother's past is coming to attend her fate. When the drug mound erupts, bringing with it an age of terror and violence, these women must find the strength to protect hum humankind from a devastating threat. That were the books that I got for my birthday and the books that I bought myself in the thrift store. And all in March and slash April. First day of April, because my birthday is literally on April Fool's Day. So thank you all for uh, coming here to see the books that I will now put into my bookcase. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, watching this video. And if you liked it, please leave a like. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.